Hello everyone and welcome back for another episode of Indie Impressions. My name is Nick. Today we're checking out Space Giraffe because I felt like we haven't done a really nice proper psychedelic trip fest in a while. This is uh, by many of course generally considered like the spiritual successor to Tempest the way that Geometry Wars was the spiritual successor to Robotron. I mean granted they're not literally related to each other in any direct way but they are very much inspired by each other. So, I don't actually know how to play this aside from knowing how to play Tempest, uh, but, I mean, the first thing they tell you is Space Giraffe is not Temp- Space Giraffe is not Tempest. You need to learn new techniques to score well in Space Giraffe. We recommend playing through the tutorial mode at least once to familiarize yourself with new techniques. The tutorial is set up to allow you to learn and explore without worrying about losing lives. That sounds like a pretty good plan to me. We've got a bomb, a jump, and a speed. And then we get some sweet achievements, apparently. I'm not too concerned about achievements, and uh, I should mention this has been available on Xbox Live as well as on Steam. I was fortunate enough to pick this up as part of the uh, the Deep Space Bundle. I think it was Bundle in a Box and came with Death Ray Manta, which seems very apt. And uh, this is my first time trying it out, so I mean, I heard it got pretty bad reviews. I don't really care. Reviews don't really matter. Uh, we're just going to try it and see how it goes. I think it should be pretty exciting. There are a couple of modes graphically, just so you know. Uh, this is the acid mode, and there's also a more traditional mode that should be easier to see. But I figured for the sake of explaining how we do this all, it's uh, probably better to go with the crazy one. Alright, use analog sticks to move, uh, giraffe and aim, stick to hoof shots. Press bomb button 1 to continue. There's our bomb. Wow, it certainly is pretty chaotic. Uh, yeah, I can see the relation to Death Ray Manta immediately, even though, again, no relation there either. Uh, shoot enemies to extend power zone, keep zone extended as much as you can. Are we purposely not filling in the rest of the sentences, or what? I mean, probably. The numbers uh, seem to be vacillating between the colors of Wonder Bread. And that's interesting, I guess. Uh, it kind of hurts my eyes a little bit. I kind of feel like I'm cross-eyed playing this, and the fact that it says Power Zone in very large letters is something as well. Press bomb. Okay, I'll press bomb again. Oh, what was that? I think it just did a little song for me. Quick power-ups to get jump pods and keep Power Zone extended. Alright. So I'm trying to, like, figure out what exactly I'm, I'm doing here. In emergency, use a jump pod to jump above the rim. Use a jump pod by pressing slider 2. I don't know what slider 2 is. I'm going to guess uh, B, maybe? Kind of weird if this is a game that was on Xbox Live, and yet it doesn't seem to refer directly to the Xbox controller. One of those issues that seems to come up occasionally. Hey, I can't really die here, so I'm not too worried about it. Um, I think I may actually go out of this and go back into the regular mode pretty soon, because, yeah, this is... You know, it's kind of boring. I don't really feel like I, I know what I'm doing wrong, so I know how to improve. I mean, in my power zone is actually you can bowl enemies off the rim by running into them. I don't even see where it looks like a, a giraffe, really. I'm looking for a giraffe. Everything's so wavy. Certainly is colorful though, I'll give him that. Music seems nice, I mean obviously I can tell the Tempest reference. I was a pretty big Tempest fan back in the day. I had the one on PS1 that seemed like the best version of Tempest at like 5,000 million levels. And I definitely held its high esteem as being one of the most psychedelic games that existed at the time, aside from like LSD, uh, Dream Emulator, which was not available in my region. Yes? Yes? Congratulations. Oh, okay, we're doing that on purpose now. I get it. A winner is you, but our giraffe is something, something, something. Alright, let's back up now. I'm not concerned about getting awards. Uh, yeah, I'm fine with that. Is there a mode called Chaos Mode? Because I want to go to that mode. No, there isn't. The Eyes of Allard. Future level. Okay, so we can pick our levels through this arrangement here. There seems to be quite a bit to see. There's, uh, looks like a hundred levels. Let's start at the beginning again. 
So this is done by Llamasoft, right? So that's the guys who did Winamp, I believe. Uh, which was my MP3 player of choice back in the day. If I'm wrong about that, then forgive me. Uh, about, you know, who made this uh, being the same person. Pod get. I wonder if the using poor grammar to attempt to emulate English will eventually go out of style. Maybe not. I don't know, is it funny to you guys anymore? I think it might be less funny to me. Once they patched it out of Dark Souls, I was like, alright, I guess, I guess we've moved on. You are mech. Yeah, I guess I kinda am. Uh, so I'm shooting away, I'm not even trying though. What's going on here? Oh, there's the, okay, we got a level. All the background aesthetics, like all the crazy spinning, flying, psychedelic crap, it's all kind of like washed out looking, which is a little sad. Everything looks like it's uh, interleaved, I think is the word to use to describe it. It's like every other line is being rendered, so the whole thing looks a little blurry and dreary. I like nice, vibrant, crazy colors when I want to play these things. This, this looks like we're missing half of the data here. It also just looks kind of dark, doesn't it? I kinda like the typography on the fire at the top, that's pretty sweet, I guess. I'm kidding, I really don't. Um, there's all these meters, I should've probably paid more attention to the tutorial, right? Now I'm just gonna complain about how I don't know what I'm doing, even though it tried to teach me. That's kinda the routine. That's how we do it. I don't know, man, I think I can play this just like Tempest, and I think it's pretty much gonna be fine. I'm actually just gonna spin around this. Uh, there is a lasso or something that has extended for me. I think I'm quite successful spinning in circles. I don't see a problem here. Yeah, I felt like using a bomb because it was boring. Oh, the phone's ringing. Uh, and by the phone ringing, I mean the phone isn't actually doing anything. It's just in the game. I don't even have a phone that sounds like that anymore. Everybody's got those digital wireless phones now. It's pretty crazy. And I mean, aside from even, like, our cell phones that we all have with us, I mean, like, we have those actual, like, digital base stations and crap. For those of us who still even have phones in our house, I don't know, maybe that's... We're in the minority at this point. That's probably bad when my commentary is just completely falling apart into talking about what kind of phones we have in our house. Um, I guess that means there's not a ton to say about this one. I kind of feel bad. Usually the shiny, crazy ones, I usually, I can find something. But this one's just sort of boring. <laughs> I mean, I don't think it's bad necessarily, but I just... For the amount of stuff that's going on, it feels like there should be more intensity, or like you should feel more attached to what it is. I mean, I, right now I, I could really take it or leave it. It's all just happening. Probably for the first ten levels, I won't even have to try to play the game. I'll just go back and forth until everything on the screen dies. And then I'll move away and... You know, go to the next level. It's pretty to look at, though. Are we sneezing now? Lovely, gosh. Top hole, gosh. Now I'm kind of seeing, like, uh, Death Ray Manta kind of took this same formula, whatever this crazy, unique niche is, and really kind of ran with it in a much more interesting direction. And, uh, my apologies, you know, if the developer watches this, I'm, not, I'm really not trying to you know, be a jerk to you. I think this is probably quite playable. There's just a few things I would like to see worked on. I mean, the intensity... If I remember in Tempest, like, the, the music was a really a big driving force, and in this one I feel like the intensity for the music is really... maybe lacking. I mean, it's, it's there, there's music, but it's way in the back. It's not pumping, it's not pushing us forward as much. And at this point, my ability to simply go in circles getting a little comical. I'm sure this is not going to hold out, though. And why are we we're just making silly sounds from, like, a speaking spell now? It just seems like it's trying so hard. I mean, you know how much I love my random, crazy, abstract games. I mean, that's, like, my favorite kind of stuff to play on this channel, but... Oh, I got a thing. Sweet. Great green... What? Arkle seizure? I don't know what that said. <laughs> you are average. Well, at least I'm not meh. And there's like some runes up in the corner there. Space level six. 
Okay, now I can't just spin in circles, so that's gonna make a little bit of a difference in my gameplay. I should probably have tried the original version as well. I don't think I'm gonna, though. Uh, plus, it's nice to leave a little something for the imagination, just in case you guys want to pick this up. Maybe you want to see what the other mode's about. Oh, excuse me. I'm just, like, I'm kind of zoning out now. My eyes are glazing over a little bit. I'm trying to just focus on, like, the back of this ring so I don't just completely lose my mind. Oh, that's making me dizzy. Top hole. So, you know, another episode of Seizure Warning. That should really be my split-off other show that I do aside from Indie Impressions. I could do one just called Seizure Warning, where we just play games that flash and blink and make us foam at the mouth. You know what sucks too is I can kind of- I can tell the music is actually pretty good. It just needs to be more present, I guess? I mean, I could probably turn it up, sure, but like, it needs to be more, th like, thumping. It needs to have more... depth to it. I like the shape of this level. It makes me wonder, like, if games like this, if the gameplay of them is just sort of obsolete at this point. Like, obviously, the way that people would try to modernize something like this is add a leveling system, add some sort of upgrades or persistent power-ups. Because really, that's, like, just what we do now. Like, everything is better if we just add persistent power-ups, right? That seems to be the way it goes. There we go. Um, so I guess I died. Uh, that's the way it goes sometimes. Yeah, I don't know how heartily I'm gonna recommend this one. It's not bad, but I just, I wasn't having such a craving to play Tempest that I needed to really get this far into this. But I mean, I do respect Tempest, and I think this did a pretty good job at using that formula and maybe taking it a little further. Just maybe not for me. I don't know, maybe one of you guys out there can comment further if you are a, like, a diehard Tempest fan, and you, uh, have some more perspective on what exactly this game means to you. You know, maybe I'm just the wrong person to look at this one, but, you know, I'm the right person in that I love psychedelic crap and flashing colors, so I can't have gone too wrong there. But uh, just the idea of just sliding left and right, I mean, right now, it's not that big a deal. I mean, yeah, you can see these guys coming and try and go in the, the same alleys that they're in. Try and get some power-ups occasionally. Everything's pretty stylish, everything's flashing. But, I don't know, it needs more impact. You know, when you shoot these guys, it doesn't feel like you're even shooting them. It's just like, pew, 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 and it's just going on without your input at all. So, I don't know, I don't think this is worth a bad review. If I was giving this a score, I don't think I would give it, like, a 2. Because that's what I've heard some people did, which I think is, I don't know, I, I never hardly agree with that stuff, unless the game is just literally just poorly put together, like, not finished, buggy. I don't get that impression about this game. It seems like it's polished for what it is. It just maybe has a very specific person in mind who would really appreciate it. There's nothing wrong with that. I mean, everybody knows not everybody's gonna get into half the stuff I cover on this channel, so... I don't know. I don't fault them for that. So I think we're gonna wrap it up already. A uh, short episode today. Sorry about that, but, you know... Gotta go where the, the meat is, and I don't really think that there's gonna be that much more to say about this. This formula is just gonna repeat, the levels are gonna get crazier, uh, there'll be more chaos ensuing. My giraffe's in another castle, I'm a bit rubbish. Oh, that's pretty. That's what I needed, I need to see something like this for a minute. That'll... maybe that'll just fix it. No. So there we go, we're in another level. It's, uh... More interesting colors, but now I'm still just going left and right again. I, don't know, I want I want more skill. Like Geometry Wars for me was a really long, ramped up road for getting better at it. And uh, this one, I don't know. I just I don't think I would care to really put the time in. But I think I should stop digging myself a hole before I start getting rage comments, because I can see that coming right now. Those of you out there who love Tempest, chime in in the comments. I want to hear what you have to say about this. Uh, please don't think that I'm trying to intentionally be a jerk. I'm just giving my honest opinion, and, uh, you know, hopefully you can't fault me for that. Okay, it seems like something's going on now. It's a little crazier. Oh boy. I should probably use a bomb, right? Uh, or just win the level. 
I like these colors more. Yeah, okay, I think we're gone. We're pretty much done now. So as always, head on over to the website, www.indie-impressions.com. Check out all the videos, uh, see the ones on Steam, Desera, Free, Greenlight, and uh, see what that means for you. You can search for uh, specific devs if you like to in the search box, and uh, generally just hang out in the forums, meet some cool people, and play lots of awesome indie games. There seems to be some kind of weird furry thing going on at the end of this tunnel. I'm not sure how I feel about that. Um... <laughs> Did it just say cube is not for yiffing? Oh my goodness. That's not right at all. Alright, well, at least there's a sense of humor here. I respect that. Uh, but yeah, when you're done with the website, facebook.com slash indie impressions, leave a like on it if you would like to, then every day's new videos will aggregate right to your Facebook feed. That way you can come to me instead of me coming to you. Whatever it is. Wait, I said that backward. I can come to you instead of you coming to me. Yeah, that's what I meant to say. Anyway. Last but not least, if you have any comments, questions, suggestions, criticisms, or if you're an indie dev and you want to get in contact with me, quickest way to do it is at Rockley Smile on Twitter. There's also a contact form on the website. Feel free to send me an email, send me your uh, review copies of your games. If you want me to check them out, I'll be happy to take a look. And remember, Cube is not for yiffing. That's going to do it for today. Make sure you come back again tomorrow for another episode, and I hope you have a lovely night, and I hope you are not frothing on the floor right now. Thanks for watching, guys. See you later.